Hallo Deutsch Class 8 Module Pune Flexion Drive The name of the lecture is Was has you for Daina Gesundheit Gitan? So was has you for Daina Gesundheit Gitan means what have you done for your health? Here Daina Gesundheit means your health, Gitan means done. So was has you for Daina Gesundheit Gitan means what have you already done for your health? So the contents in this video you will learn are Das Perfect Sane in Haben verbs, Rules of Participle for Regular verbs, Rules of Participle 2 for Irregular verbs, Das Perfect Sentence Formation, Next lastly Question and Answers. The first topic is Das Perfect. This Das Perfect is like uh, the present perfect tense in English. Let's see what does this perfect tense means. The perfect tense is a form of verb used in German to talk about the action that, that is done in the recent past. So when you speak about an action that is done in the recent past, we say that is past perfect tense. For example, like the what should be this recent past means like 10 minutes before if you've done something or maybe one hour before or uh, suppose you have done your homework one hour before or you have taken your breakfast in the morning or you have uh, played tennis yesterday. So, or, or else you did uh, yoga yesterday. So, all these are recently done activities or recently done actions. So, the action when you're speaking that is done recently, this is known as present perfect and in German it is perfect tense. P R F E K T. For example, I have given here sentences I have played tennis. This tennis you have played recently, that is already done, the action that is already done comes under perfect tense. I have returned my homework. It means that you recently wrote your homework. You have already done writing your homework. Suppose uh, he, the other one, he has eaten breakfast. Suppose he ate breakfast in the morning. So you can say as he has eaten breakfast because that is recently done. It is done in the morning only. So you will say he has eaten his breakfast. So in this form, in the present perfect tense, in English we know that after subject have or has these are called as auxiliary verbs and have or suppose have after that past participle of the verb comes if it is has also has and next past participle of the verb comes here in the first example i have played tennis the verb is play and the past participle of play is played the second example the verb is write and the past participle is written similarly the third one is eat and the past participle of eat verb is eaten and here in every sentence after the subject we will have either have or has and the past participle of the respective verb this is how the present perfect tense is formed the same rule applies in german also but there are other conditions also in this now the german verbs are of two types they are regular verbs and irregular verbs regular verbs are called as weak verbs and irregular verbs are called as strong verbs. Let's see further. Let's see the rules of the perfect tense. The first rule is German perfect tenses are formed with either haben or sein past participles. So all the sentences in the perfect tenses they use either haben or sein. It should be the verb should be in the haben past participle form or in the same past participle form will be used. Okay, and this past participle is known as participle in German. Okay, the second one verbs, these are the conditions that apply when you are using the past participles and writing a sentence in perfect tense or saying in perfect tense. Okay, the second one verbs that do not change movement or the state of location then haben verb is used you, we use certain verbs suppose like read verb is there there is no change in movement for the read verb i read a book is there any change there is no change Re read doesn't express the change of movement or change of location what what does it mean by change of location it means like from one place to another place so there is no change in the read verb that is no change in the movement or location then for such type of verbs haben verb are used the other verbs are sane verbs either they come under haben verb or they come under sane verb the verb that has no change in movement or change of location then haben verb comes and the rest all comes in the same verb 
that's what here it is said verbs that change movement or the change of location then same verb is used if there is a change in movement or change in location then same verb is used for example common is there common means come no gehen means go paharan means ride so for this uh, common for example you are going from school to home so there is a change of location change in movement so that is called as a uh, change in movement so same verb is used here if you say common that is from school to home you are going so from place a to place b you are moving that is from school to home so there is a change in movement is happening so the verb common is uses same verb similarly for gehen paharan there are some certain verbs that has change in movement or the state of location they represent so those verbs comes under same verb the next rule for the regular verbs now there are different rules for regular verbs and there are different rules for irregular verbs first let's see what the regular verbs rules are till now you have learned that all the present perfect tenses have either haben or sein past participles if there is a no change of movement or no change of location then haben verb is used if there is change in movement or change in location from place a to place b then same verb is used this is the general uh, ru- general rules of this perfect tense but when it comes deeper then the second part is as as i said earlier german verbs are divided into two types there are regular verbs and irregular verbs means the verbs come under these categories of regular and irregular so as they come into these categories the regular the rules are applied for them now let's see the rules for the regular verbs the first one the rule one for regular verb the past participles of regular verbs are formed by adding ge at the beginning and t at the end of the verb by removing en so now we are using past participles as i said earlier i have played tennis have and played is no, there no played is the past participle of play so that past participle we have to make here depending upon the verb so what is the rule for making the past participle for the regular verb means suppose here coffin is there coffin means to buy so coffin uses this condition that for coffin if you take this coffin verb the spelling is c a u f e n so for the coffin first you have to keep g e prefix cough plus this e n will be removed and instead of e n will be replaced with t we will remove this en at and it will be replaced with t so ge plus cough plus t becomes g cough g coughed okay here in the coffin we will re- prefix with ge then cough and en will be removed and this en will be replaced with t and then coffin past participle is g cough the second rule not not all the verbs of regular verbs becomes that uh, like ge prefix and ending with suffix with t not like that and again if the verb ends in d m or t if suppose the here coffin en it is ending no for coffin but there are certain verbs which end with d or m or t the past participle is formed by adding ge at the beginning and an et at the end so in the prefix both are same that ge will be added but the suffix will be changed for this en verb en will be removed and t will be added but for the verbs that are ending with d m or t et will be added okay that is ge suppose arbeite is there arbeite means work to work so this arbeite will is a regular verb and the condition because the it is ending with t so it comes as ge plus arbeite plus et here the suffix will not be removed that en part is not there so we will add et here instead of t so it becomes g r by t i hope you understood the third rule the verbs ending in i e r e n so there are certain verbs that ends with i e r e n their past participle are formed without g e prefix we have to add t at the end of the verb by removing en so here uh, i e r e n 
in the end en is there no this en will be removed and t will be added but ge will not be prefix it for this verb for example if we take this studieren s t u d i e r e n this lastly if you see i e r e n is there in the verb so in this type of verbs en will be removed and t will be added but prefix ge will not be added so now studieren will be transformed as studier plus en will be removed so t will be replaced for en so studier plus t becomes studier so this is the way the ie or en verbs are formed in the regular verbs now there are exceptions in this uh, regular verb uh, we know that sign verb means we use this sign verb for the verbs where there is movement change of movement or change of location from place a to place b like when we use gehen it means go common means come this kind of verbs uses sign verb because there is movement momentum in this for example like we are going going from uh, uh, from a home to school for example or from a home to a hotel so there is a play, change of place from place home to hotel no place b so this kind of change in movement for the for these verbs we use the sign verb but in this exception bleiben is a verb it means to stay so this bleiben is a static verb no it means like it doesn't have any momentum in it wherever you are there you will be so there is no movement in this verb but still this bleiben verb uses the sign verb this is the exception in this though there is no momentum in the blind verb bleiben verb we use the sign verb for example like how to use this uh, bleiben uh, the bleiben verb past participle is gib bleiben okay now how to use this uh, suppose you have to use stay stayed no that is bleiben past participle is gib bleiben so you have for example like i have stayed at home you should not say ich habe you have to say ich bin zu hause gib bleiben because this is an exception for be bleiben verb we will use the same verb here ich bin means it is not i am you have to take it as i have okay because this is the exceptional verb that uses the same verb i hope you understood this exception let's see some commonly used regular verbs to need means these are the german verbs and these are the participle brauchen means to need as you learned that en should be replaced with t and this regular verb should be prefixed with ge so brauchen can be written as ge brauchst frazen we fragt kaufen here fragen means to ask kaufen means to buy so ge kauf kohen means to quit ge kauf leben means to leave ge lebt machen means to do ge macht sagen means to say ge sagt spielen means to play ge spelt suhen means to search ge sucht tanzen means to dance ge tanzt wohnen means to recite ge wohnt is the past participle of wohnen so these are the commonly used regular verbs let's see about sein and haben verbs first let's see the sein haben how it is conjugated for subject singular ich bin it is i am bin means i am here so ich bin means i am du bist means you are er sie es ist mein ist will be used for these three er ist means he is sie ist means she is es ist means it is sie sind means you are this is formal you for respected way when you want to address the other person then you use formal sie so sie sind means you are for subject plural we are sind we are er means you all for er it is here means you all are this is used like when you are saying to uh, students or some people anger to you then you will say this ear said it means you all are z sin means they are z that is formal you all that is sin that is you all are how to use this sign verb basing on this been based is to sin said we will make sentences for example like ich bin stephen means i am stephen because for ich it is been means i am next we are seen student and means we are students yes student and means students again suppose like uh, she is tina means she is tina in this way the same verb is used the next verb is haben let's see its conjugation for subject singular ich habe means i have 
dew has means you have at cs hat means your ear hat means he has c hat means she has s hat means it has z formal haben means you have subject plural wear haben we have ear hab you all have z haben they have z haben you all have suppose you are speaking to the elderly people so for, for more than one one person then you use z haben that means you all for example like c hat ain in stepped means here c s is capitulated but still if you observe the conjugation it is hat that is c ham z hat means she has ain in stepped means a pencil she has a pencil do you has ain paharad do you has means you have ain paharad a bike so in this way the haban verb is used now let's see about irregular verbs and their rules and what all the verbs comes under irregular verbs now the first rule is the en of the verb remains the same and t will not be added at the end now i'll explain this with a regular verb first of all the regular verb suppose i have taken here leben verb leben is a regular verb and here as in the regular verb what we have done is we will prefix the the uh, verb with ge and the en will be replaced with t so leben will become as ge plus lebt and that becomes gelebt and gelebt is the participle of leben this is the way the regular verb happens but when it comes to irregular verb the verb will be prefixed with ge but en will not be replaced with t unlike regular verbs this en remains the same in regular verbs So again, I'm repeating. The verb will be prefixed with g, and en will not be replaced with t, and it remains the same in irregular verbs. The other condition is e. If there is e i in the verb, it will be changed as i e in the participle. If there is e n in the verb, it will be replaced as u n in the participle. So these three are the conditions. and uh, of course ge uh, will be prefixed in the beginning this is the fourth condition so let's see with examples now here binding is a binding is a irregular verb if you see here the spelling b i n d e n here i n is there in the verb and it will be changed to u n if you see the fourth uh, rule i n will be changed as u n right so first it will be prefixed with ge and i n will be replaced with u n so ge bunden So this will be the participle of binden. Here, binden means to bind, tie. This this meaning. Next, blyben. If you say blyben, blyben means to stay. This is also an irregular verb. Here, e i will be replaced with i e. So if you see the fourth uh, rule, e i will be replaced with i e in the participle, and so if the blyben will becomes as g e plus b l i e b e n. So this is. the participle and it is called as ge bleiben so ge bleiben is the participle of bleiben and here irregular verbs doesn't follow i mean some verbs follow the rules and some verbs doesn't follow the rules they have their own pattern in making the participles that is why since they doesn't follow the rules irregular verbs are called as strong verbs and since regular verbs follow the rules in making the participles the regular verbs are called as weak verbs so i hope you understood about this irregular verbs there are also other verbs in the irregular verbs that doesn't follow the rules and they not only this four condition sometimes they change their they have their own participle pattern so there is no logic or rule in for, forming that participles and you have to learn in that way only now i'm giving a few more examples here of irregular verbs see most of the irregular verbs follow ge here if you say uh, as in the first condition backen is there that is ge backen here backen means to bake paharan means to drive to ride so ge paharan because en will not be replaced with t in the irregular verbs now fallen means to fall ge fallen now see here the verb spelling changes from ie to e i to i e and i n to u n so here i am giving you few examples binden will become as gibunden and blyben will be changed to ge blyben and haben will be changed to ge hab and see here if you see haben haben is a irregular verb 
en will be replaced with t and warden will be replaced as g will be replaced to o g warden warden means to become and g warden is a participle of warden here it does it, it is not following the rule right so in this way i have given few common irregular verbs and please uh, no, note this in your notebook and practice them for binden it is it means to bind and if you see the spelling i in will be changed to in given den and beaten means to request gibeten there is no certain rule to follow in this irregular verb in the spelling if you see the participle and sn will become as gigesen faharen as gi faharen fallen gi fallen finden means to find gifunden flyingen means to fly giflongen given means to give gigeben helfen means to help gi holfen common is a regular verb to come that is gi common next here laufen means to run gi gi laufen lesson becomes as gi lesson where lesson means to read nehmen means to take and gi nomen this is the participle of nehmen and writen means to write gi writen scriben means to write gi scriben and here swimmen if you see i have highlighted in red color so that you'll observe the change this becomes as gi swimmen that i will be replaced as o this as swimmen means to swim sahen means to see gi sahen sein means to be gi swisen and if you see the spelling here w e s e n singen means to sing gi sangen spreken means to speak and gi sproken this is the participle of spreken so i have given some common irregular verbs please practice them i hope you understood about this irregular verbs and regular verbs too now till now you learnt about what are regular verbs what are irregular verbs how are they formed and how and what are the participles of those regular and irregular verbs now you will use those regular and irregular verbs in the sentences now let's see the thus perfect sentence formation now you have to use these verbs in the sentences right so the perfect tense means it has a helping verb and a participle now here if you see what is the sentence formation subject helping verb object participle subject and here helping verb means as i said earlier all the mm, verbs are of two types either you use haben verb or sein verb depending upon the verb type so subject and if it is helping verb then haben or sein should be used in the helping verb place then the third one is participle of the verb that you are using and then the object i will explain with examples now see subject haben after subject haben or sein verb any either of this will be there then participle then object see in uh, for present tense how do you say i eat breakfast this is present tense now if you want to change this sentence to present perfect tense you will say that i have eaten breakfast because present perfect tense means the action that is done recently and i have eaten breakfast means you have already done eating breakfast so for uh, present perfect tense you use haben or sein verb and then partis participle of the verb here the haben verb will be used and the participle is eat eaten because the verb is eat and its part participle is eaten so i have eaten breakfast will be the present perfect tense the second example she cooks the dinner this is the simple present tense when you have to change this simple present tense into present perfect tense you will add have or has and participle of the verb so she has cooked the dinner here the participle will be in the past format because this is already done action so she has cooked the dinner it means she already cooked the dinner now let's see when to use happen or sein in the sentence now let's see when to use happen or sein in the sentence i have explained here with a two pictures here if you see the two pictures the first picture is playing football okay in this you are suppose if you are playing football means you are playing there itself only when you are playing tennis you are playing there itself you are not changing the location 
suppose you are eating pizza or you are drinking milk or you are reading a book or you are sleeping all these verbs doesn't have the change in location so for such kind of verbs you will use haben because haben is used when there is no change in location okay now in the second picture if you see the girl is riding the bicycle that is she is moving from one place to the other place that is she is changing her location so for this type of verb same verb is used because same represents the change in location or changing place so i hope you understand now let's see few example sentences how to use uh, and how to make this uh, perfect tenses now here as i said earlier subject then haben or same then object then participle now here let's see the example in english this one and this is in german so first example i have seen the show suppose you have seen the film then how do you say here see is the verb and the past participle is seen so i have seen the show there is no change in location so you will use haben so ich habe die sendung gesehen here habe will be used because there is no movement and die sendung means we program the show then gig sehen is a past participle of sehen because sehen is a verb to see and gig sehen is a past participle of sehen next stephen has played tennis here again there is no movement because you are playing tennis there is no change in the location so haben verb will be used and here played means spielen is the verb for play and gig uh, spielt is a participle for play for play that is spielen so Stephen has played tennis means Stephen had tennis gis played. Third one Tina has done the homework. She has already done the homework. Do is the present tense and the past participle is done. So here Tina and here also there is no change in the location. She is doing the homework. So Tina had the house of garden gemacht. Here Tina had means Tina has what what does she has done? means here gemacht mahen is the verb for to do and gemacht is the participle of mahen and the house of garden means the homework so tina had the house of garden gemacht means tina has done the homework here if you see suppose in all the sentences this is the subject in this sentence tina is the subject here haben or sein verb is there because there is no movement you are using the haben verb then the sendung is the object and this is the participle of the verb gemacht next adam has ridden the bicycle here adam has ridden the bicycle the verb is ride and its past participle is ridden and here the bicycle he is changing the location he is going from one place to the other place so same verb will be used and not haben so here how do you say this adam has ridden the bus bicycle means adam is paharad gi paharan here instead of has you should not write hat because this represents the bicycle ridden represents the change in movement so because this verb ridden represents the change in movement we will use is instead of habe hat so adam is paharad gi paharan here paharan means ride and the participle is gi paharan So Adam is Paharad. The Paharan means Adam has ridden the bicycle. So this is how we will make the sentences in perfect tense in German. When means when. Sometimes you need to specify the day in a sentence. Then these are the words. Hot day means today. When means when. Sometimes you need to specify the day. in the sentence when that uh, instance happened so here are the words hot day means today gaston means yesterday what gaston means day before yesterday now gaston means yesterday what means ago so a day ago means day before yesterday let's see woh means last week here let's see means last woh means week war zehen tagen means 10 days ago here tag means a day tagen means days Zehen tagen means ten days. What zehen tagen means ten days ago. Let's zehen monat means last month. Let's zehen zehar means last year. So now let's use these words in the sentences. Let's see how to use these words in the sentences. What has you Gaston gemacht? What have you done yesterday? Gaston habe is tennis gis pailt. Means I have played tennis yesterday. Here Gaston means yesterday. 
Spelen is the verb to play and Gespelt is the participle of Spelen. Since there is no location change in Spelen verb, Haben will be used with Ish. That is, the conjugation of Haben per Ish is Habe. So, Gestern Habe is Tennis Gespelt means I have played tennis yesterday. Wo haben Sie letzte Zeher gefahren? Means where have you driven last year? Letzte Zeher sind wir nach Paris gefahren. Hier letzte Zeher means last year. Sind wir nach Paris gefahren? We have driven to Paris. To Paris means nach Paris. In German the rule is when you are traveling to towns or cities then for to in English we have to use nach. So, nach Paris means to Paris. Paharen verb means to drive and gi paharen is the participle of faharen. And since there is travel involved here and the change of location happens, so we use the same verb. And the same conjugation for we are is same. So, let z zahir sin we are nach Paris gi paharen means we have traveled to Paris. Third one, was had Tina hote in der Schule gegessen? means what has Tina eaten in the school? Tina had hote in der Schule pizza gegessen. Tina has eaten pizza in the school today. Here essen is the verb to eat and gegessen is the participle of essen. And since there is no change of location here in this verb essen, so haben verb will be used with Tina. So, Tina had hot in der Schule pizza giges and means Tina has eaten pizza in the school today. So, I hope you understood about this lesson. If this video helped you, please like the video and let me know in the comment section how this video helped you. And please subscribe to your channel. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.